Okay, so let's begin. So today we'll be doing a series of programming exercises. Um, the way this will work is I will first tell you what to do, give you some time to do the exercise, and then we'll review it together on the projector. All right? So pay attention. So the first exercise is this. In JavaScript, implement, which is another way of saying write, Code that simply prints to the console, hello world. The text, hello world. Go. <laughs> JavaScript. Begin with JavaScript. Let's see. Write a program that will write to the console, hello world. The text, hello world. Go. JavaScript. Script. Do it. Now, do the same for Java. Go. Well, you don't have to run it. You just write it somewhere. Try to write with the most correct syntax you can. Uh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Good question, though. <laughs> okay. So, let's review. Let's do it together. I think that's enough time. So, remind me, how do I write hello world to the console in JavaScript? Boom, all right, so that's JavaScript. Great. How do I do it in Java? So I need to create a class. Wait, 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 hang on, let me zoom in. So I need to create a class, call it something, it doesn't matter. I need the driver, the first function that will get, Jesus, the first function that will get called in order to run my application. It begins with public, static, void, main. Public because it's a public method. Static because it belongs to the class and not the instance. Void because it returns nothing. Main is the name and this is the argument. It takes an array of text. And here, what do I write in order to print something on the screen? Uh, in, onto the console, system dot out dot print or print ln in order to go to the next line, and then quotes. Okay, can I do this? Why? Right. So in Java, you have to use double quotes in order to represent text, in order to represent strings. Good. I save that, and if I run it, I get hello world. Boom. Very good. Hands up if you were able to do it. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the next one. Hang on. So, write a program that asks the user to name and... Okay, now implement a function in JavaScript that takes in a name as an argument and writes to the console, hello, that name. I'll repeat it one more time. The function takes as an argument a name, like Ruben or Joe or Mike. That's the arguments to the function. The function then prints to the console, hello, so-and-so, whatever that name is. Do it in JavaScript first, then you will do it in Java. Go. It helps to learn how to type. Yeah? Yeah, now once you do it in JavaScript, then do it in Java. Remember, JavaScript and Java, do both.
Time. All right. So, how do I do this in JavaScript? I need to declare a function. How does that work? Okay, let's say A is what? With a function with an argument name. Good. And when it gets called, what does it do? What? Quote. Like that. And now if I call A with Joe. Hello, Joe. Questions. Good? Simple? Let's do it in Java. So in Java, there are two ways to make a function. We can either make it static, that is to say, have it attached to the class, or non-static, which means it gets attached to the instance. Let's make a non-static function. So, yes, sorry, sorry, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so let's, let's have it be a public function, let's have it return nothing, and let's have it do uh, print hello is the name. What does it take as an argument? A string, with, and let's call it name. And what does it do? What is the implementation of the function? Remember, by the way, it's important that you understand the, the, the terms I'm using. Implementation of the function. That means the code inside of the function. Okay, implementation of the function. What is the implementation of the, of the print hello function? Then what? Where is it returning a string? Show me where it says return. Okay, okay. Boom. Um, good, okay, so now here, can I, how do I call print hello? Eh? I can just write print hello like this. What do I do? The class? But it's not static. If it was static, if it was public static, then you're right. I could just take the name of the class and say class dot hello world. But it, but it's not static. So what can, what do I have to do to use a map? Okay, what class is print hello in? This, right? So because it's not static, I have to first make an instance. Now I can call that attached to the instance. Oh, sorry. Thank you. There. No. If, if you just do example inheritance dot print hello, you can do that as long as the method is static. Remember, if it's static, it's attached to the class. If it's not static, it just, it's attached to the instance. That's the difference. Questions on just this. Ah, very good question. So the question was, why can't we just create a function inside of our function, right? So we have a function here, main. Why can't we just make a function here and then just call it? It so for the so. I think the new version of Java has this notion of lambdas, which is this weird syntax of how to do nested functions. But in general, in Java, functions are attached to classes. You can't do a function inside of a function. In JavaScript, you can, you're right. In Java, you couldn't. I think now you can, but it's kind of weird, so just don't. It's a different programming model. Yes? Not the template, exactly. I can attach it to the template by making it static. Then I can just say example nine in inheritance, which is the name of the template, dot, no problem. Got it? John, Joe gets it. Okay, other questions regarding this? This is easy? Let's keep going.
All right, so what's another one? Modify a previous program such that only the users Alice and Bob are, are Okay, so now change your function. Change your function so that when name is given to it, it only says hello if the name is either Alice or Bob. If it's anybody else, if it's any other name, it doesn't do anything. Let me repeat that one more time. Just change your function instead of just taking a name and saying hello name. Change it so it takes a name and only says hello if the name is either Alice or Bob. Got it? Go. Do it in both languages. JavaScript and Java. Uh, just make up two names, Joe and Jack, Alice and Bob, I don't care, just two names. JavaScript and Java, do both. Okay. So what do I have to change here in order to make sure I only get hello Alice or hello Bob? If, if what? Notice a few key things here. Checking whether something is equivalent in JavaScript requires three equal signs. Yes? Okay, good. You guys know the OR operator, good. Also notice that because this is inside of the if statement, it's nested, it's embedded in, it's tabbed in. Notice the formatting, it's kind of important. Any questions regarding the JavaScript implementation? So notice I did a Joe, I got nothing. But if I do a, let's say Bob, I get hello Bob. Yes? Questions? Clear? Let's keep going. Let's do this in Java. How do I do this in Java? Oh, hang on, let me zoom in, sorry. How do I do this in Java? Same thing with two equal signs? Okay, let me do that. If name is, is that right? Why isn't it right? John, good, 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 good. If it's Alice or if name, oh, name is Bob, then and only then should it be, okay. One small detail that you guys should just be aware of. If you only have one thing after the if statement, it's okay not to put the curly braces. This means this runs only if this is true, right? But I encourage you to always add these, these uh, braces to avoid any confusion. But it's important for you to know it, so if you read someone else's code and they don't have braces, you understand what they meant. No, JavaScript as well, same, same rule, okay? But when you write code, always put the curlies in, okay? Okay, uh, questions regarding this? Any questions here? Simple, right? Any questions? Okay, let's keep going. user for number and then principal number. Okay, write a function that takes, pay attention, write a function that takes a number, n, and then it adds all the numbers from one to n. 
So if I give you 5, it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Any questions regarding what needs to be done? Yes? Assume it's a positive int, just to keep it simple. Um, do this first using a for loop, then do it with recursion. In fact, let's do this. With uh, JavaScript, do recursion. With Java, use a for loop. Go. Okay, let's do it together. So we want to implement a function in JavaScript that takes a number. What do I do? Some variable. Let's not call it A. Let's call it something that matches. Some, okay? What do I put into it? Function which takes N as an argument. Good. Where N is a positive integer. And what do I do? I want to implement it recursively. Return what? Return nothing? Okay, return zero. Else, what do I return? Good. Let's see if it worked. Console.log sum of, say, five. Not bad. How does this work? So remember, 5 goes in here. Is 5 0? No. So it's 5 plus whatever sum 4 is, which is the same thing as 4 plus whatever 3 is, which is the same thing as 3 plus whatever 2 is, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until you get to 0. And then you add them all up. Does anyone want me to go through this tree? Everyone understands how this recursion works? Does anyone be brave? Does anyone not understand how this recursive function works? I will respect you more if you're honest and say you don't. You all do. Love? Good. Okay, let's do this in Java. So in Java, we'll do it using a for loop. So let's call it sum. It takes a number, right, as an argument. Guys, yes? So what do I have to change here? Okay, int n, and now what? I want to add all the numbers between n and all the way down to zero. Four. What's e? E, like that? I. Int is equal to what? Zero. Okay. It doesn't. Which one do you want me to do? I is n or I is zero? There's no difference. I just want you tell me. N. Fine. N. Okay. I is bigger than or equal to zero. Or one. You're right because you're gonna add zero and it's gonna do nothing. So fine. Or one. I plus plus. You understand why? I minus minus, which is the same thing as, what's another way of doing minus minus? Minus equals one, right? It's the same thing. So minus minus just means subtract one from I and put it back. Okay, so that's our loop. Uh, now what? Huh? Don't say bun. There's a name for that. What is that? A variable. We need a variable, a running variable. Okay? Tell me. Okay? Let's initialize that to zero. And then we want to keep adding to A, right? Well, if N start, starts off with five, right? I is now 5. So we add 0 to 5, that's 5. 
Then we subtract i, which turns into 4, we add that. Then 3, we add that. Then 2, we add that. Then 1, we add that, and we're done. Yes? And so am I done? I have to return it. What's the problem? Exactly. This is saying that the function returns nothing. But it doesn't return nothing. It returns a number. Can you just console log, you mean? Like system.out.println? You can. Um, it depends on what you want to do. If your goal is to just print, yes. But if you want to compute and get a number back, That's right. Now, because we don't use this, there's really no point in making it like non-static. We could have just made this static and then just said this. And this would have worked just fine. You're right. But for now, I'll make it non-static. Non-static means it has to be part of the instance. Public int. Questions so far? Is this simple? Yes. And it doesn't work. Is the logic the same as in JavaScript? OK, let's, let's do it recursively in, in Java. Let's do it recursively. So let's do, uh, OK, so tell me, how do I implement it recursively in Java? If? A, N, 0. What do I return? Return 0. Else, what do I return? Like that? OK, so let me run it and see if, see if it's right. Where is it? Mm. Hang on. Oh, I have to console. Hang on. System dot out dot print line. Sorry, sorry. One second. So what I did was after I called sum, that returns the number, and then I print that number, right? So if I run it now. I get 15. Who was? Ah, oh, Sat. Did you have this as your code? Well, work, worked on my screen. Any other questions? Keep going. How? Okay, but at some how does the how is the formula implemented? Oh, you mean there's a shortcut. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I get it. Good. Yeah, it's good to know math. <laughs> All right. Uh, other questions? We're good? Keep going? Next. Next. All right. Let me give you the next one. Okay. Now change. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. Change the function you just wrote. So at, instead of adding every single number from 0 until that number, it only adds the numbers that are multiples of 5. So that means if I give you 15, you only add 5 plus 10 plus 15. You guys get it? Yes? OK, go. By the way, you might be wondering, how do you know if a number is evenly divisible by a number? Yeah, so it's, it looks like this.
so if you want to know if n is divisible by 3, you do if n modulo 3 has a remainder of 0. Keep the functions the same. So keep, keep the JavaScript as recursive and keep the other one as non-recursive. Sorry, say that one more time. Yeah? Or five in this case. Let's do divis yeah, five. But yes, that's actually the simplest answer. That's the easiest way. I don't know if you guys heard it. It's much easier than doing it this way. Recursion, same thing, right? You just add that much instead of one. Let's see if they can figure it out. Okay, are you guys done? Let's do the easy one first. The for loop, wait. Yeah. By the, by the way, just very quickly, you guys know that at 3 o'clock we have like an awesome socket I.O. presentation today, right? One of your classmates, super awesome classmates, is going to be teaching you guys how to write these dynamic applications. So this would be great to know for your projects so you can keep your application alive as things change on the server and you can do games and all kinds of things. So if you can make it, it's worth coming to. Um, anyway, just so you know. Okay, so tell me, what's a simple way for me to solve this? Right, so one thing I could simply do is just check to see if i is divisible by 5 evenly. And only in that case should I use it. Wait, wait, wait. So, so this is the, do you guys agree that this is pretty straightforward? Yes. Yes. Who doesn't understand what modulo does? You all know what modulo does? Good, okay. Okay, so modulo means take the remainder, and remainder, if it's zero, then there is no remainder, therefore it's evenly divisible. Okay, fine. So as long as i is evenly divisible by five, we're going to include it. If it's not, then we don't. Easy, right? Uh, okay, so not really. Well, if you were to start with zero and go up, you could. Because zero plus five is five, that's evenly divisible. Five plus five is 10, evenly divisible, right? But if we go the other way, if we initialize i to n, what if n was 12? Is 12 minus five evenly divisible by five? Right, but what, I'm, what I mean is, if instead of doing i minus 1, if we were to do i, I minus 5, would this work? Why? And if not? 
Ah, so you start off with recursively bringing it down, and then you loop and you find. You, you're, no, the logic you're saying is absolutely correct. But is it optimal? Isn't it just simpler to, let's say, start out, have i be 0, just add 5 to i as long as i is less than or equal to n? Beautiful. Very well done. Awesome. Questions about this? OK, so you guys could see how I could put the same thing into a recursive function and get the same result. Yes? I don't have to go into it? So we keep going? Fine. OK, we keep going. All right, let's go to the next one. Ah, OK, now implement a function that takes two arguments. The two arguments are a number and a string. If the string says uh, sum, then return the addition of all the numbers between 1 and that number. If the string is multiply, then multiply all the numbers between 1 and that number, which is factorial, right? Understand what the, what the problem is? The second argument tells you whether you should multiply or whether you should add. So there are two arguments, the number and the string. The string either says multiply or sum or add. Whatever. Understand? No. OK. You have a function. It takes a number and a string. The string tells you whether you should add all the numbers from 1 to that number or multiply all the numbers from 1 to that number. That's it. And the string is just either add or multiply. Go. By the way, we're slowly going to approach problems that they will ask you during interviews. These are easy problems, but we're getting to the harder ones. So let's go. Go fast. Too lower? Too lower case. Yeah, it's camel case. Lower case, yeah. By the way, a quick thing, guys, whenever you hear anyone say camel case, what they mean is this. Um, two, or, so every time you start a new word, it starts with a capital letter. So it's like, right? That's called camel casing. Got it? So if you ever hear that term, camel case, this is what they mean. Okay. Yete yegrot argument as multiplier factorial ara. Yete sama gam add. What I mean, gumari. Any short no I think. Carlos. How many people need more time? Okay, you got 15 seconds. Okay, let's solve for the JavaScript, which is recursive. It takes two arguments, n and operator. If the operator, if operator is add, then do that one. Else, if the operator is multiply, then do n times sum of n minus 1. But one thing, I have to pass along the operator. And in here, instead of just 5, I do multiply. Wait, what? Oh, right, 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 right. Ah, uh, uh, good. You understand why I changed this to 1, right? 
Because if in the add case, we would have added one extra. Right? So if instead of multiply, I did, uh, what was it, add? Now it's 15. If I did this, I would have gotten 16. Understand why? Because for one, I would return one. For zero, I would return one again. And I would get one more. Okay, questions. Is this simple? Do you understand why I'm passing in the operator again when I call sum? Because the next time I still have to know what to do. And the next time I still have to know what to do. Make sense? Aish, do you accept the Yes. I'll say Jim. Okay, look, here's how this works. I call sum with a five and an add. So n is five, oh, you know what, hang on. Okay, can you see the code? Okay, we go in. So n is now five and operator is add, yes? Is n one? No, good, so we keep going. Is operator add? Sure it is, operator add, look, add. Add goes here, so operator is add. Yes, you agree? Okay. So now we return n, which is five, plus whatever sum n minus one is, n minus one is gonna be four, and the operator, which is add. So let's go in there. So now we do the same for four, add. Now we do the same for three, add. And we do the same for two, add. And we do the same for one add. Oh, we return one. So now, one gets returned and gets added to the two. Two gets returned, gets added to the three. Ba -ba 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 -ba, five, return. Got it? Boom. So, and then we print. Uh, not that. Then we print 15. Yeah? Jokes? Okay. Other questions regarding this? Okay. Good, let's do this in Java. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, what do I have to change? I need another argument, right? So I do comma. What type of argument am I taking? And let's call it operator. Okay, so in here, instead of just, oh, let's get rid of the whole modulo five thing. So, it, yeah, let's assume, well, oh, yes. You know why? All classes are begin with uppercase. That's the standard. Remember? And string is a class. So it begins with uppercase. Okay, so uh, we check to see, so here we're adding, right? So if operator is add, then we add. Else, if operator is multiply, then what do I do? What? Huh? A, hang on. Sorry, wait, wait. I'm trying. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So a uh, times equals i. You're right. So a needs to begin with maybe a one. Or what we could do is this. Look, 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 here's what we can do. We can have a b n and have i begin with uh, n minus one. You get it? You don't, okay, so let's say the input is five. A begins with five and I start I with a four. Four greater than or equal to one. So I add I, which is four to A, which was five. And then I do the same thing for three and the two and the one. Okay, then you can go up to N, but not including N. Yeah. You can have A begin with a 5, 
And then do plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Get it? Same thing with multiply, because order doesn't matter in multiplication, right? Make sense? Okay, the rest of it, this code, does the code make sense? Any questions so far? We're going to keep going. Dude, you got five seconds. <laughs> okay, let me give you a fun one. This is one that I ask during interview questions all the time. All the time. Here, is it, here it is. We have two variables. Var A has a number, like 23. Var B has a number, like, I don't know, 6. Yeah, this is JavaScript. Oh, sorry, not var, of course not lot. Uh, let. Oh, it has to be let, not const, because we're going to change them. So how can I change it so that the, the variables change places? Uh, hang on, okay, so okay, clearly someone knows already. Hang on. If you know this already, just... Okay, so a simple way would be to add another variable. Let's see. Have that be A, then have A get B, and then have... Uh, hang on. Yeah, B get C. Right? This is an easy way to replace the variables. Do you guys see it? Do you guys see that? Here A has 23, B has 6. Now C has 23. Now B uh, now A has whatever's in B, which is 6. And now B gets C, which is 23. So A gets 6, B gets 23, right? Yes. Now the interview question. Don't use a third variable. You can only use A and B. You can't use any other variable. Uh-huh. Okay, tell you what. Don't answer. Implement it now. Do it. In JavaScript. Keep it simple. Implement it in JavaScript on your own. Go. By the way, this question is asked for senior engineers. But you can solve it. It's easy. Really? Uh, one thing to note, we're dealing with numbers. That's important. It wouldn't, what I, the solution I'm thinking wouldn't work if you had like text. It has to be specifically numbers, these specific things. Are you raising because you, you, you have it solved? Or you have a question? You solved it? Okay, let's solve it. Who has a solution for me? Okay, here we go. A is A plus B. What, does, what goes into A now? 23 plus 6, 29. Then B is A minus B. Okay, so given that A is 29 and B is 6, what ends up in B? Right? 20, if A here is 29, look, if this is 29, 
and we do minus b, which was 6, the output is 23, right? So that's the 23 that goes into b. Now a equals a minus b. Okay, so now b is 23 minus, and b, sorry, a is, ah, a is 29, sorry, sorry, a is 29. There it is, a is 29. And b is 23, which equals 6. So now a gets 6. There you go. You're done. A now has 6, B now has 23. Huh? Oh, apply means to demel. Did you, were you hired? Were you given an offer? A good offer with a high salary and lots of perks. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you want me to go through this again or is it clear? Go do it again? It's clear. Yeah? Okay. Elianem, Nag. Okay, okay. A is ster hap, ster. A a image xani reka, xani reka. B image vetsa. Che? A is for anu meng. So artsunkum kalini a image kalini xani xani na. B image kamena vets. Sa ya for anu meng. B image kalini xani rek. B image kamena vets. Saya for an ang, just a man. A match galini vets, B match gamana xan yerek. So, Barza. Clear? Good. Okay, let me give you another one. Okay, write a function that takes an array as an argument and returns the largest value inside of that array. I know, but I wrote it. Now you write it. Do it once in JavaScript and then once more in Java. Actually, you know what? Wait, 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 wait. Just do it in Java. Just Java. Go. You have a function. The input is an array. The output is the largest value in that array. So if I give you 1, 5, 10, you give me back 10. Got it? Go. Assume the number, the, it's, a, it's an array of ints, an array of integers. Give me the biggest integer in that array. Does anyone want me to repeat the question? Good, go. Hey guys, one more thing. Learn to write code fast. Don't take your time. Go, do it. Let's go. Okay, what's the algorithm? The algorithm implies the steps that I would use. Say this is my array. How do I find the biggest number in this array? Go. Okay, good, good. So he, look, look what he's saying. Make a variable and, I don't know, x, and put inside of it that. Okay, so question. Wait, so listen what he's, so he's, here's what he said. He said first, put the first value into the variable, then run a for loop that begins from zero until the end, presumably each time checking to see whether that value is bigger and if it is replacing it, right? Question to you. You've already put this in here. Do you need to begin with zero? You're checking this against itself. You've already put the zero index into x. So where do you begin? Exactly. Beautiful. 
It's a minor thing, but it's better, right? Okay, so you begin here and you compare 5 with x, which is 1. Is 5 bigger than 1? Yes, so you put 5 in here. You compare x with 2. Is, x, is 2 bigger than x? No. Is 8 bigger than x? Yes, 8, 8 is bigger than 5, so you put 8 there. Is 12 bigger than 8? Yes, you put a 12 here. 10? No. 1? No. 15? Yes. Then you return x. Questions regarding the algorithm. Is this clear? OK, so now let's implement it. What does implement mean? To write, to actually do it. OK. So we're doing this in Java, right? OK, so we're going to take an array, uh, a list, and we're going to return, hang on. OK, so now in x, we're going to put list 0. Sorry. We're going to put list of 0. Then, then what? equals 1, i is less than list.length, i++. Plus plus. And for each one, we check, for each list of i, for each one of these values, we're going to check what? Not i, list of i. Then what? Yes? Beautiful. Very well done. Questions regarding this? Yes. In church? No, well, when we call your, when you call sum, you can pass it with an array of like, right, and then this, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. And oh, hang on. A dot. This is how you use it. You get it? You make a list, you give it to it, it takes the list, it returns the biggest thing, and it returns it to you. Got it? Questions regarding this code? Is this clear? Okay, let's keep going. Write, sure. Uh, hang on, oh, I have to, hang on. Six is the biggest number in this list. Well, I could have just taken this and put it directly into the result into print, right? But I'm just storing it in. A, I could have called this a and then printed a. Because why not? It's just a place to put it. Questions? Keep going. Yes? Okay. Write a reverse function in Java, in Java, sorry, in Java. The argument is an array. The output is an array with reversed order. Understand? Reverse. As in the first one becomes the last one, the second to last becomes... Reverse. Okay, go. Go. Implemented. Yes. Sure. You write a function that takes an array of ints, returns a reversed array of ints. Go. Yes.
I'll leave it up to you. Do you know how to do both? We're going to do both. Raise your hands if you need more time. Okay, let's do this. So uh, we need to change the method signature here to return an array. Instead of sum, we're going to call it reverse. We're going to take a list. Okay, so there are a few ways we can do this. One is we can modify the array that was given to us. Another way is we can make another array and return the new array. Let's first implement the one where we create a second array. Are we running late? Oh, five minutes. It's okay, don't wait. Okay, ready? Pay attention. Let's create a second array. New list, new uh, int. Look what I did. When you make an array in Java, you have to say how big it is. Remember? But because I want to return the reverse list, it needs to be the same number of values as the original. That's why I pass as the argument the original list.length. In other words, I make an array that is just as big as the one that was given to me. Clear? Okay. So now let's loop over the original array. Int. How do I loop over the array? Good. And now for each list i, I want to put it into the new lists what? What do I put into this question question? What is it? Like that? Okay, so when it's zero, it would be list.length. Exactly, good, 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 good. Okay, so list.length is the length of the list, minus zero, minus one would be the last one, good. So we, we, so look, this is my second array, which has zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as the indexes. We begin with 0, and we say length minus 1, which gives us this. So we put this into here. Then we do i plus plus, so we come here. We do length. What's the length? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we do 8 minus 1, that gives us 7. Minus 1, that gives us 6. And we put 5 into 6. Are you following this? Then we do i++, plus plus, so we come here. So this is 0, 1, 2. We do length minus 2 minus 1, that gives us 5. And we put the 2 in the 5. And then the 8, then the 12, then the 0, then the 1, then the 15. and we end up with a reverse string, and then we return this string. Is that clear? Yes? Okay, without writing code, just very quickly, because we're short on time, how do we reverse an array without making a second array? Forget code, just look at it. How can you visually, what do you have to replace in order to reverse this? The first with the last. You have to replace this with this. 
right? Swap them. You have to replace this with this, this with this, this with this, right? Okay, so that means you begin with the first index and you replace that with the last index. You move forward one and you move this one. Then you replace. Then you move this way, this way, replace. This way, this way, replace. And you keep doing this until you get to the middle. You're right, you have to replace them, so you need a temporary value to swap them, yeah. But the point is, you do the swapping, how many operations? Half of it. You understand why? You have the list, you swap this with the last one, you move down. This with the other one, swap. This, swap. And you do this until you get to the middle, you stop, go. Well, if you think about it, if, if you keep incrementing and decrementing a variable, if the two variables are the same, then you're done. You get what I'm saying? Okay, let's say you, you have a length of five, right? You're comparing zero with four, one with three, two with two. So if the variable is the same, you don't swap. Or if you do swap, you swap with yourself, nothing happens. So it works, yeah? Good? Let's take a photo. Up circle of Karen! Hey! Bravo, go.